Netanyahu says absolutely no to peace in the region. Guys, welcome to the channel. Please bear with me. You'll understand exactly what I'm explaining here once you connect the dots. So this is from CNN moments ago. It was quickly turned away. But I want mostly for you to understand how we're being manipulated, both from the so-called right, from the left, definitely so, from the mainstream, from the elite, from the establishment, and how it is not all that difficult. Look, this is from moments ago in uh, CNN, in, in CNN's website. Netanyahu rejects Hamas' demand to end war for hostage release. In that headline alone, war, what exactly is this? is a war now. It is 2 million people that are starving to death that you keep on bombing. Objectively so. This is literally what you have right now in these refugee camps in Gaza. These are desperate people starving to death which continue to be shot, bombed, or at times killing one another for food because of the situation that they created. Um, yet they call it a war. Look, if I have a hundred people locked down in, in, a, in a warehouse and I go and execute a bunch of them every once in a while, that is not really a war. So as we have a war, there needs to be some kind of parity of force. I mean, you could be overwhelmingly stronger than the other, but there has to be something. Even from the moment this started with the launch of the Palestinian Air Force being a guy in a parachute and a ventilator that was laughable, now you don't even have that. You just have a heck of a lot of this instead, which is starving people, women and children mostly, being bombed to pieces. But let's go back to the headline because I think it is so smart. They're so clever. So Netanyahu rejects Hamas demands to end war for hostage release. We already address about how much of a war this is or not. Uh, but even within this, what is the point then of continuing bombing these people? So you don't want them to be... Wasn't it a point in which they wanted all of the hostages to be released so as to end hostilities? That was the request from the Israeli government. Release every single one of our hostages. That was a demand. Well, apparently that's not good enough. So what is the point in which the war will end with Hamas? Which, big fucking question. What is Hamas? Who started it? Who finances? Who continues to admit to be financing up until this very moment? It is that man that you see here who openly says, yes, we send money, cash in fucking suitcases into Gaza for the so-called Hamas. Why would you do that? Aren't you supposed to be against Hamas? Isn't Hamas supposed to be a separate element other than your own? Why are you financing? Why is it that you're allowing money to be given to Hamas? And when even those Saudis stop sending money to Hamas, you find ways of, of financing it yourself with cash, US dollars in bags. That is a question that needs to be answered at some point. It probably won't, but I invite you to do your own research on this because it will blow your damn mind. But if peace is not what you want, what is it that they want? Well, that's kind of a tricky question. Get rid. It's really not all that tricky. If you do a little bit of research, you, un you find the answer. The answer is they want more of, of this until there's no... Of these people left anymore. Every one of them is a potential Hamas um, militant, so they all need to be eliminated. Now, what is does this mean for us? You're not Israeli. You're not Palestinian. What is it that you care? Well, first of all, I am a pretty sensitive person, so I am in favor of peace and the not murdering of innocent women and children. Call me crazy. That's how I feel. I really would like to see people not get slaughtered either in Gaza or the West Bank or in Israel for that matter, which again, interestingly enough, the people that got slaughtered in Israel when Hamas attacked happened to be Israelis that were in favor of peace. The concert that was attacked was a concert for peace. And a lot of people that were not even Israeli were there. Let's not forget that either. But the Israelis that were slaughtered, the enormous majority of them were in favor of peace and lived close to the border and were very much in favor of having an end to all of these hostilities and finding some kind of solution for this. That is obviously something that Netanyahu is not interested in. But 
in regards to how we are affected by all of this, or at the very least, how we should pay attention to how we're being manipulated, um, I go back to what happened in Madrid just a few days ago. This is the president of Argentina. We like the president of Argentina. He's a libertarian. He's a right-wing guy that is in favor of, of freedom. Okay, we all like that. Is that really what he's all about? Eh, kind of, at times. So we like like 80-90% of what he says, especially when he talks about economic freedom, when he talks about, about anti-socialism and how he makes a huge point about how socialism and communism and all of the, this left-wing mentality is poison to humanity. We agree with that? I, I at least do. I assume you do too, if you're watching this channel. But then there's the point in which the guy from the Israeli government shows up, and that's the point in which the anti-2030 agenda from the World Economic Forum gets kind of tricky. So, you talk against uh, globalization, you talk about the International Monetary Fund and the New World Order and the 2030 agenda, but then you have this thing that is kind of confusing. Um, where is it that you stand? You stand with freedom and liberty for everyone, for some of us, depending on the religion. Where, where is it that we are at exactly? This is something that came up in the Viva event in Spain, the right-wing event that gathered a bunch of people, you know, leaders, Meloni was there from Italy, so most of the right-wing conservative leaders from all over, I don't know if the U.S. sent anyone, but basically you had most of the right-wing people in politics in this event. Even in that event, there was a little bit of a discrepancy and scuffle and a little bit of, of debate or arguing or fighting, especially with the Israeli guy that in some ways aligns, in some ways not so much. Um, but it's interesting noticing that also the president of Spain, a socialist known uh, for his very socialist views, Pedro Sanchez, um, he is, in fact, often talking about how these people are being bombed and how this is horrible. They are about to recognize, they actually recognize Palestine as a state. Oh, that damn Pedro Sanchez now recognized in Palestine as a state. He is with the terrorists, with Hamas. Is it though? Is he really? Because when it comes to actually do things that matter, such as removing your ambassador from a country that you're against, which he did in the case of Argentina. Pedro Sanchez removed the ambassador of Spain in Argentina because this man, the president of Argentina, said that his wife was accused of corruption, which she is, and that he's dirty, which he is, no doubt. So they removed the ambassador of Spain from Argentina. You know what ambassador he did not remove from Spain? From Israel. So on one hand, he's recognizing the Palestinian state, which means fucking zero, nothing at all. On the other hand, he does not remove the ambassador from Israel, which he says he is against all of this massacre and brutality. Guys, we are on our fucking own. I don't know if you get this at this point, but we are against serious forces that have a lot of power and that are, of course, in politics on both sides. If you think that a bunch of students protesting, something that I very much agree with, it, with which is stop murdering people, I don't know how... And there's people that say, no, you have to kill them all. No, I don't want to see all of the Palestinians killed or all of the Israelis killed. And, and this thing of uh, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea or Israel will be free from the river to the sea, which both of these sides uh, claim, I think that they both should be free from the river to the sea. You know, find a fucking solution. People of different religions and people that even don't like much one another happen to often live in the same country and they just figure things out. They get by. I think that's a lot more about... about this. It's a lot more about the the agenda you know the the the, the elite doing its thing uh, on one hand you have the students protesting in the united states they, uh, and they happen to be the typical dirty wokey kind of flavor that we are not particularly uh, sim sympathetic with on the other hand the politicians that say to be with them are financing this 
all along. Nancy Pelosi literally said that if the United States blew up, if the Capitol got nukes and there was nothing left, the only thing that would re be remaining in the Capitol, in U.S. soil, would be loyalty to Israel. Or even more specific, loyalty to this kind of, uh, of element, the current Israeli government, which is not a representative of everyone in said country. Let's make that perfectly clear, right? But guys, we have to fend for ourselves. We have to be free thinkers. We have to read between all of these lines. And when they try to you know, pit one against the other, in theory, uh, the attack that happened right now, this was because of eight rockets that Hamas, whatever the fuck that is, launched against Israel. Is It is incredible. Eight rockets which are basically firecrackers. If you have any idea of the so-called missiles and rockets that Gaza has been launching by the thousands for years now, it is embarrassing. I've thrown more powerful stuff during Christmas in Argentina that I bought with 50 bucks. And I'm talking about literally so. These are tubes with just enough powder so as to fly over and dropping a piece of metal across the border and just having that as a justification to trigger a airstrike warning and oh we're being attacked we need to retaliate this has been going for years people are just ignorant about it because you're busy you have your life you, how could you possibly know about this how could you possibly know that the hundreds of thousands of missiles launched from a place that is absolutely controlled by israel not a bag of of, of sugar goes into that territory without the blessing of the Israeli government. How the hell has this been going on for years to begin with? And most of all, why is it so fucking ineffective? If you've thrown hundreds of thousands of missiles, you kill what? I think that one guy got scared and died out of a heart attack? It really gets to that point. It is ridiculous. You would think that if it doesn't work, don't even do it. What purpose does it serve? Well, maybe the purpose that it serves, if it's not effective from a tactical perspective, it is effective in the headline perspective of, yeah, you've been throwing thousands of missiles. <laughs> There's going to be some dumb motherfucker that will go, <laughs> they threw thousands of missiles. What missile? Who the hell threw it? From where? Who controls that place? What are you, stupid? Don't you just see what's going on here? Look, when I was living in, in Northern Ireland, we... I was just blown by going online every day and looking that where I live, there was another bomb threat. Yes, every single, it was every single day. Yep, another bomb threat. Where? What the fuck are you talking about? Where is this so-called bomb threat? How could it be that years go by and every single day there's a bomb threat and nothing happens? Who the hell is doing this? Well, it is not difficult. You can connect the dots. You understand that when you put that into people's brain, you're being manipulated. You're thinking, yeah, there's... No, there's not. There's no bomb threat. No one is worried about anything. No one even did a, a bomb threat. You're making shit up. You're inventing things. So as to then, when you take some kind of um, nefarious action, you can justify... Oh, the, 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 oh yeah. Yeah, they, they did a bomb... No. This is just a, a, a step beyond that. But it's the same thing. Guys prepare, be a free, independent thinker, don't believe what either side, whatever the hell this is that we're living in, has to say, because they're all manipulating us. Do I like what Javier Milei is doing in terms of, of the economy in Argentina? Yeah, I guess so, sure. Is it far better than the commies that we had before? Yeah, sure. Uh, is there still a lot of corruption? Well, yes, because he actually welcomed some from the previous administration into the current one. The man that says he's going to be eliminating the, the elite uh, from the left. So, yeah, it is really not all that, that encouraging, but it is what it is. We just have to make sure we support the things that we, we believe in. But most of all, understand that there's no saints going on here. No one is perfect and no one is entirely, completely uh, going to be aligned with our own interests as people that are not in this or in this, or fortunately for most of us, not in this either.
Guys, prepare for that. I strongly recommend, as always, my book, Surviving the Economic Collapse and Street Survival Skills. My book's based on my experience, my research over the years, and a lot of hard work. Uh, and as always, you have the channel full of information. Just use the search function. And if you have one specific uh, idea or if you have any requests or questions, uh, topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, by all means, let me know in the comments below. That's what I do here. See you on our next video. Take care.